I'm Jim Kavanagh. I was born in Reard, about two miles from here, down towards Anishon Head. And I, went, I fished salmon basically from, I think, 1961. But I went to England when I was 18. <clears throat> Spent about a year and a half there and then went to the Merchant Navy. Spent about six years there. I came home and started to fish, and I've been fishing up to uh, 13 years ago. I would have trawled and fished salmon and all the rest of it, but it, even when I was at sea, I would have come home every summer for the salmon fishing. I retired from fishing when I was 60, and I worked for a couple of years in the school boat, the fishery school boat. And I worked three or four years on the ferries. So basically I do nothing now. I'm retired. None of my people would have been that say some of them years ago may have fished salmon in small boats, but there would be no history of being at sea in Merchant Navy or or that type of thing. Well, things were very handy at that time, you see, the, the way you got away, if you, if you fished over many years and the, some of the pilots, they would be taking a ship up to Derry and if the, the, the ship was short of a, a young fellow, the pilot would get you the job. Like, there were no qualifications, no nothing at the start, like. You'd never get doing nowadays, like, I mean, you'd have to have all, all sorts of qualifications and preparing. The young ones on the ferries used to laugh at me. I was in the water from I was, well, from I was 20 basically, 19 and a half. I never could swim. I never was about my belly button in the water in my life, unless I was in a boat. Like <laughs> and I don't think ever I could be taught how to swim because I'd be too scared. But they thought this was hilarious. Children of three-year-old can swim now. But there was no swimming pools at that time. Like. Thank God I never worried about it. Well, there's no question about it. Like if you had a fill over the side, you were gone. Or, uh, no, no doubt about that. But isn't that uh, we, I didn't worry about it. Like we're, we're very, very lucky in that regard. The work was good. I couldn't do it now. Like I mean, there's climbing and and heights and stuff like that there. But you're, it was twenty years of age. Like you look at things different. I was British. I have a very peculiar story in that regard, and it, it wouldn't have been only me. I have a British seaman's discharge book, and of an Irish seaman's identity card. You know, it's, <laughs> it seems strange, but that's the way it was. I oh, know, see, it was a good job. And the thing about it was, as well, uh, the, the money you would get would have been the equivalent of what you would have got laboring in England. But the thing about the ships was there was no accommodation fees to pay. You know, your grub was, was there, like, and even a pound you made, it was your own. So I thoroughly enjoyed it. I was an uh, ordinary seaman to begin with, basically your labourer on the, on the boat, like, and then as years go on you get an AB certificate and a lifeboat man certificate and you're basically doing the manual work on the boat. You tie, tie the boat up and opening and closing hatches and keeping the boat clean and tidy and painting and that type of stuff. You would have been all over Europe, basically, and I would say there's not a seaport and possibly in Europe that I haven't been out there. But you say you've been to them, like you've been to the docks and, the, you know, you, like from the top of Norway to the, the, the Baltic, Holland, Belgium, France, Spain, Portugal, Gibraltar, Italy, Greece. You've been around them all, like. I had one run on a big passenger ship, and she run from uh, Southampton to Montreal in Canada. Done four months on that. That was good. 
he isn't doing much exploring. Walking distance from the dock was as far as he got. If it was now, you'd explore farther, but not then. You could get away for, uh, like, I mean, you, uh, if you're in, you, you work days, you're finished at five o'clock in the evening, as long as you're back for nine o'clock the next morning, nobody asked where you were or what you were doing. I enjoyed that. You worked shifts. Like when you were at sea, the, the, the earlier ships you'd done four hours on duty and four hours off. And then as years went on, it changed. There some of them was five on and five off, and some of them were four on and eight off. You slept, and the, there weren't even TVs at the time, like. Or had books. But it was a good life, like, I mean, the weather was bad weather. It wasn't that good, but it wasn't always bad. I had done a couple of years in a, a wee butcher run from Derry to Preston in England. They carried containers. But all in that there would be just a, the, the full of the hatch of coal or, or fertilizer. Well, basically, I met a girl I was going to get married to and I wanted to be home. And the thing about it is, fishing at that time, you would earn as much money fishing as you would have on a ship. So why be away when you could be at home? And that worked very really well for us. I went to fish with a local man here, he was John McClemahan. He was the first man I fished full time with. I worked for a couple of years with him and he's, he was getting a bigger boat. So I bought the one that he was, uh, that I went to fish with him with. So that was about 1973. So I've had a boat of my own since that, up to the time I stopped. In fact, there's one just out the window there, and just that's the last boat that I've had, a Silver Bell. And she's in, presently in Clotherhead. But he's making a passage down to Galway, so that was the last boat I had, but that's 13 years ago. Uh, up until the time I stopped, the big modern boats were starting to come into fashion at that time. But like when I started, the, the trawler was 50 foot long, a wee wooden boat to 100 horsepower. I mean, you're looking at a steel boat there now of maybe 90 foot with maybe 1,000 horsepower. And they were uh, much easier better, safer way of doing things than we had. Like a wooden boat was quite, uh, there's a wee one out behind the, the behind the museum there, the Ross Nickel, you may have seen her. That would have been the size of my first boat. And they're, they're quite small. Uh, there are, there are a couple of brothers would have fished. Three of the brothers would have fished. But uh, not in the long term. They never, they never got boats or anything like that. They, they found other things to do. Nowadays, it costs that much. It's almost impossible for a young fella to get into the, the business. Like it, when I started, Borley Skawara, or they, they were given the first thing you had to do was raise a deposit, which was roughly ten percent of what the price of the boat was. And the rest was a loan from BAM at a very low interest rate, four percent at that time, which is unheard of nowadays. Like, but BAM, I don't think I'm not sure about this. I don't think they actually loan money anymore. They, they maybe help out go security with banks or that, but I don't think they're actually giving money. It was a good system at that time. Like anybody that wanted to have a boat could have a boat, but. Like they have a thing there now with tonnage for boats. One of them big boats there now, the tonnage of them there, you could be talking about half a million. You know, it's a working man can't put his hand on half a million, and that's before you'd buy the boat. There's very, very few young fellows, young local fellows would be fishing now. There's some of them there in small boats, they're fishing up the river there for oysters and the, that type of thing, but not the type of fishing I done, that's gone. Well, there's, a, there's quite a bit going on there now. Like, I mean, there's a factory just up the road there. He makes netting and 
there are a lot of people working on that, and there's fish processing going on. And like it is a much better scene than it was a number of years ago, although there wouldn't be the same amount of people at it. But uh, our by fishing fleets as modern as you would get. And like I had my own boat when I was well, 73, I would have been 26, 27. You were basically your own boss. You went to fish when it suited you and you stayed in when it didn't suit you. And you met a lot of good people. And they were dodgy ones, but more good people than dodgy ones. Like people that you be fast friends with to the present day. And it was a great way of getting to know people as well. I mean, it, if you went away here on a Sunday night with maybe four other fellas with you, three maybe, and spent the full week or from that to Friday, you knew them pretty good. You knew their strong points and their weak points, but basically you, you met a lot of good people. We used to have station masses and houses here. I don't, don't think they do it anymore now. But the Wilson boats was a bit like that. It was a date when the boats were all painted up for it and they all flew flags and bunting and all the rest. It was lovely and people were out in the water that had never been in the water before. Yeah, another tradition going. Mm. Well, it was a good job it went because uh, there would have been an accident and it would have been stopped then. So at least we had the sense to stop before the accident. Very good. I just to think, um, Harry, can you think of anything? Because I, mean, I think you covered quite a lot. You must mm -hmm. like, the stuff there at the start. No, I suppose the only thing I would ask is you're talking to the people sitting out at the back there, the size of the, the first boat that you had. I mean, yes. What on earth would possess you to go out into the Atlantic on something that small? We would have fished as far up as uh, Drew Arthur's, uh, it's up about, I'd say, it's up on the Scottish coast, but it's probably 30 miles, maybe 40. Look, we got there and got back. Although I was just thinking, you were saying earlier about memories of my time fishing. On this morning, 23 years ago, there was a boat called the Caricatine, I'm sure you've heard and read of her. It was reported missing this morning, but six men, six local men. And there was a sight or sign of her saw from that age to this. So that would be the, the biggest event that we've ever had. The oldest man on it was 38 years of age. The youngest was probably 16, 17. Other all local fellas. 16th of September 1995.